to 1 Samuel chapter 24, starting at the 8th verse. Again, that scripture is 1 Samuel chapter 24, starting at the 8th verse. While we're turning, while we're going on our iPhones, can we clap our hands to our wonderful leaders of Mount Moriah Community Church, Raleigh, Bishop Aaron McNair, and the Lady Ashley, two amazing and wonderful leaders. To everybody in the fivefold ministry, we certainly say peace be unto you from God our Father. Amen. We're going to go to the word of God. First Samuel chapter 24, starting at the eighth verse. It says, then David went out of the cave. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To whom this may concern, I'd like to file a missing persons report. I'm looking for people who are courageous, fearless, witty, and creative prayer warriors, anointed, skilled at whatever you put your hands to, to the person I am looking for, I'm looking for you. Everybody say me. I'm looking for you. We've declared this year as the season, um, uh, the season in our ministry, we declared it to be the year of emerging. When you emerge, you must become known and apparent. You must become known and apparent. You have to rise or appear from a hidden or unknown place or condition. You have to come out into view. You have to come out into view. You must become manifest. Everybody say manifest. Lastly, you must come into being or existence through the evolution. Everybody say emerge. Amen. This is your season to come into view. Amen. There's a game that I played as a child. It was called hide and seek. This is an old yet popular game that we played in which one player closes his, his or her eyes for a brief period of time while the other players go and hide. The seeker then opens his or her eyes and yells out, ready or not, here I come. The seeker then proceeds and tries to uh, find the hiders. The first one found is typically the, uh, the seeker in the next round and the last one that is found is usually the winner of that round. And one of many forms of the game, the hiders try to run back to home base while the seekers and uh, while the seeker is away looking for them. If all of the hiders return safely, the seeker repeats a se uh, as seeker in the next round. The game is played differently in various regions. Um, sometimes in the seeker may. Uh, be helped by those he finds. Alternatively, only one child hides and is sought out by the rest as in sardines, where hiders is joined by seekers sporadically as they find him, the name of the game coming from the crowded condition of the hiding place. Although this is a fun game as a child, this, is the, this act of, of the game has become reality for most. I'm going to say it again. Although this was a fun game as a child, this act of the game has become reality for most. The labels that people put on us, the boundaries that people have placed us in, the jealousy of our peers, the fear of existence, the fear of facing issues, the so-called giants have unfortunately forced us into hiding. And your coming out experience, you must, you, you must undo the trauma of labels that people have put on you. Look at your neighbor and say, no more labels. Yes, the labels that people have put on you. Some of us, we are stagnated in the house of God, in the place of impact, because we are stuck with labels that people have put on us as children. Some of us, we are still scarred from the disappointment of our father and our mother. We are disappointed because we were called stupid, ugly, and dumb. But tonight, I prophesy to each and every individual under the sound of my voice that the labels are being undone. The labels are being undone. You ought to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, no more labels and no more boundaries. Yes, God is removing you out of the box that people have put you in. Sometimes we are stagnated because people have told us that we can't do it and we can't prosper and we can't go. But tonight, God is taking the boundaries off of you. And your coming out experience, you must purge yourself of unnecessary connections. 
You must purge yourself. You must detox yourself from unnecessary connections. You ought to close your eyes and your ears to unsolicited advice. People are going to tell you that I can do it better, that I can handle it better, that I can serve better, when in reality they are not anointed or called to do or to even carry the weight that you carry. You ought to give, You ought to make up in your mind tonight that God is pulling the boundaries from around you. He's pulling people from around you. Sometimes you have to look at the expiration date of your relationships and your friendships. And I have to come to understand that it's okay to outgrow some people. It's okay to go and join other circles because if I'm the smartest or if I'm the richest one in my group, there's an issue and a problem. But in this next season of my life, I have to put myself around some individuals that are going to push me into my next. I got to put myself around some people that are going to thrust me into my next. I have to change who I entertain. I have to change who I sit at the table with because if we can be quite honest, a lot of people are messy when it comes to the church. And I'm not talking about the church, but I'm talking about the people in it. We have to become very careful the conversations that we keep at the table. And you have to understand if you don't speak up, you also agree. Hallelujah. You have to survey your circle. Everybody say survey your circle. You have to look at each and every individual that you entertain. I tell many of my friends all the time that there are people that are uh, that try to connect to me that do not deserve to see my scars. I'm imperfect. I'll be the first one to say it. But not everybody deserves to see the scars and the wounds that I have bled from and the wounds that I have healed from. Not everybody deserves to be in the winning circle. Sometimes people will connect to you because of where you're going, but you have to have some type of discernment in this next season that where God is taking me sometimes is just for me it's just for me in your coming out experience you must dismiss the spirit of fear second Timothy 1 and 7 say it with me for God has given us for God has not given us the spirit of fear but a power and of love and of a sound mind I want to focus on that thing called power 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 Luke 10 and 19 says behold I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing by any means shall hurt you. You have to realize, you have to identify your enemy. Everybody say open your eyes. You got to open your eyes and you have to identify the people that are, oh my God are laboring among you you have to open your eyes and you have to close your mouth sometimes and listen to the conversations that people are spewing out of their mouths because some of these connections and conversations are deadly I want to bring to your attention two type of snakes that uh that are in the physical but yet in the church the first type of snake is a venomous snake this I call the coward snake. This is the snake that will strike and bite you, step back and wait for the poison to take its action. This is the snake that will wait, bite you, turn around, go the other way, come back later and see you dead from the venom. But I want to declare to you that God is exposing every venomous person, every venomous conversation in your life. Can I just speak prophetically? God is going to expose conversations in this next season. He's going to expose the faces of people that have been conjuring against you the people that have been warring against you you have to get in a place of steadfast steadfastness and prayer and discern these people the second type of snake everybody say snake is a constrictor this is the snake that will bite grab and wrap this snake waits patiently for you to die it watches you die this snake will wait till you take a deep breath let it go and it gets tighter. And as you release each breath, it gets tighter and it gets tighter and it gets tighter until the point you have no more oxygen left in your body and you die from suffocation. You have to discern these people in your next season because they're killing us venomously and by uh, squeezing us. You have to discern these people. Can I talk about the scorpion for a minute? See, the scorpion, when, it, when you see a scorpion, that thing is ugly. There are some ugly people, ugly character people that we have come in contact with. There are some 
ugly people that have venom, but it produces venom that's not enough to kill you. All it does is it's just ugly buffs and it, and, 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 it, and it causes you it causes you to be, be to be afraid of it because of the way that it looks. But I dare you to declare in this place that no longer am I going to allow the enemy to buff at me, but I'm going to stand boldly and fight. Everybody say I'm fighting. I need you to understand that when fear comes, when fear takes residency in your life, it never comes alone. Let's talk about it for a second. When fear sets place in your life, it never comes alone. Some of us, we are trying to figure out why are we suffering with anxiety? Why are we so stressed out? The root of anxiety, the root of stress is fear. I need you to understand that when, you, when anxiety is produced in your life, you need to go to the root of that thing and figure out what is causing you to be afraid. What is causing you to be fearful in this season? But I want to... Uh, the declare to you that God is bringing you out of that fear is a coward it's a coward and when you give the eviction notice to fear this time you have to give the 30 day you have to give the uh, 30 day notice to not just fear but anxiety and stress in first Samuel in this critical period of Israel's history the people of God transformed from a loosely affiliated group of or, of tribes into a unified nation under a form of government headed by a king. They traded the turmoil of life under the judges for the stability of a strong central monarchy. They said they wanted a king and Samuel pleaded with them. They, Samuel said you don't need a king. We have the king of kings but Israel pleaded that we need a king. So first Samuel focuses on the establishment of that monarchy. In chapter 8 the people demanded a king similar to the kings of the surrounding nations. The Bible says that their request displeased Samuel. So he prayed to the Lord and told him and the Lord told him listen to all the people to what they are saying to you. Is it not it is not you they have rejected, but they have rejected me as their king. Samuel warns the children of Israel of the king that was going to be appointed, but they still insisted on having a king. So in chapters 9 and 10, Saul is anointed and appointed king over Israel. The Bible talks about that as Saul is anointed as king, the spirit of the Lord came upon him. The spirit of the Lord came upon him. His anointing rested on him, even to the point of him beginning to prophesy with the prophets. They were, there were those who saw him in one light and now in another light. And in the chapters ahead, the Bible begins to talk about how Samuel had favor with the Lord and how God gave him victory in battles. But the story takes a turn when Samuel begins to do things his own way. The Bible talks about how the spirit of the Lord leaves Samuel just as quickly as it came. The Bible says it leaves Samuel. Saul was, it leaves Saul. Saul was rejected as king, not specifically because he offered sacrifices, but because he disobeyed a direct command that God had given him through the prophet Samuel. Samuel had told Saul, go down ahead of me into Gilgal. I will surely come down to, to you to sacrifice burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. But you must wait seven days until I come to you and tell you what you are to do. But Saul worried that the whole army would desert him and offer the sacrifice himself just before Samuel arrived. This moment sounds like most of us in the body of Christ. We are instructed to do something, but because we are worried about what people are saying around us, we're worried about who's going to stay, who's going to water the soil, who's going to reap with me. We go ahead and we move before our time. So the Bible says that Samuel rebukes Saul and tells him, you have done a foolish thing. You have not kept the command, the command the Lord your God had gave you. If you had, he would have established your kingdom over all of Israel for all time. But now your kingdom will not endure. The Lord has sought out man after his own heart and appointed him ruler of his people. Because you have not kept the Lord's command. In other words, the penalty of this outright disobedience to a direct command from God was that Saul would not be the founder of the royal dynasty. That means his children will not reap kingdomhood. 
while he would remain king, his descendants would not rule after him. We jeopardize and we uh, we jeopardize generalization, uh, general prosperity when we move out of God's time. What we must understand is that when we are stepping out of the will of God, we aren't the only ones who reap what we are doing. Our children are connected to us. Loved ones are connected to us. Some of us, we have been so prone to move out of time. And we have been graced with grace and mercy. But there is coming a time that when we step out of the will of God, God's hand is not going to be with you. So you have to realize that I must be in the will of God. Saul subsequently disobeyed another direct uh, from God. Because that was just the, the one punishment. He subsequently disobeyed another direct command from God when he was told again through the prophet Samuel to completely destroy the Amalekites. Saul instead kept their king, Agag, alive as a trophy of war, and his soldiers kept the best of the cattle to sacrifice to the Lord. As part of a grand feast that they would enjoy themselves, Samuel asked Saul once again, Why did you not obey the Lord? The penalty for outright disobedience this time was that Saul would not even remain king himself for his natural lifetime. He would die early and be succeeded by one of his neighbors, not one of his descendants. And that is like some of us. There are those in here that would die premature death because of disobedience. You have to get in alignment with the word of God. You have to get in alignment with what God is trying to do in your life because it's not just you that is reaping, but it's the people that are connected to you and chapter 16 the bible talks about how samuel mourns the fact that saul has been rejected as king and that his seed will not be considered as king he instructs samuel to fill his horn with oil and go to jesse's house because one of his sons will be anointed king samuel did what the lord said jesse had seven of his sons pass before samuel but samuel said to him that the lord has not chosen these men the bible says that he asked jesse are there any other sons that you have jesse answered him and said no there is still well yeah there's still the youngest who is out tending to the sheep the bible says he sent for him and had him brought in the word says that he was glowing with health and had fine appearance and handsome futures fe- features the lord spoke to samuel and said rise and anoint him this is the one So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord powerfully came upon David. One thing that we want to speak over, one thing that I want to speak over this house, that you ought to be caught tending to the sheep, that you ought to keep your hand to the work, because as you are as you are a postured servant, purpose is going to find you. You have to understand that promotion is only for the posture. Some of us will miss promotion. We will miss kingdom advancement because our posture is out of whack. And let me help a few of you. Posture is just not something that we do. But posture is who we are. Posture is I have to get up and I have to thank God. Posture is I have to pray and fast constantly. Posture is I have to show up even when other people will not show up. Posture is I'm going to carry the weight of the vision even when others don't carry. I'm going to make sure by any means necessary necessary the vision does not fail promotion is only for the postured a lot of us we won't see promotion because your posture is out of whack in verse 14 the bible says that the spirit of the lord had departed from saul and an evil spirit from the lord tormented him The servants saw that Saul was being tormented and suggested that they find someone to play the harp and to play away the evil spirits. One servant suggested that they had seen a son of Jesse who knew how to play. They said he was a brave man and that the Lord was with him. When Saul heard that, uh, when, when Saul heard this, the Bible says that he sent messengers to Jesse and said, send me your son David who is with the sheep. Stay with the sheep. 
Stay with the sheep. Stay where God has instructed you to be because God is going to find you in your work. Your posture of serving will make room for you. Your posture of serving in the body of Christ, it is going to make room for you. Just uh, uh, David could have been anywhere else, but D David was in the right place at the right time. The Bible says that David came to Saul and he entered his service. Saul liked him very much and, the, and David became his armor bearer. David found favor with Saul. Whenever the spirit from God came on Saul, David would play his harp and, and play away the evil spirits. Chapter 17 takes us through the story of David and Goliath. Goliath was described as a champion from Gath. He was described to be nine foot tall in height. He had a bronze helmet on his head and he wore a coat of scale armor of bronze. On his legs he wore bronze greaves and carried a bronze javelin. I'm just painting the picture. Let me paint the picture. The Bible says that Goliath stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel taunting them. He told he would tell them to choose a man to have him come down to me. He told them that if he is able to fight and kill him, the Philistines would become their subjects. But if he overcame him, the children of Israel would become their subjects. If we fast forward through the story in verse 20, David set out, he was set out to check on his brothers. He was instructed by his father to check on his brothers. As he is checking on his brothers, David hears the taunt of this giant named Goliath. By this time, the taunting had been going on for 40 days. 40 days, Goliath stood and taunted the children of Israel. By this time, David was intrigued by the threats of Goliath. He talks to the other soldiers and inquires of taking on Goliath. One of David's older brothers who was uh, there heard, a, uh, heard of a conversation David was having and became very angry. He told David that he was not capable of defeating Goliath. Truth be told, truth be told, David's brothers were not capable of, of, of defeating the giant either because had they wanted to kill the giant somebody would have stepped forward and killed the giant verse 32 says that Saul sends for David and in short David tells uh, David tells Saul that he is the man for the job that he will go and slay Goliath Saul replies what well, Saul's reply was that David could not do it because David was only a boy and Goliath had more experience at being a warrior David didn't accept what the king said his words to Saul was that your servant has been keeping his father's sheep stay with the sheep stay at what you're supposed to be doing when a lion and a bear came and carried off the sheep from my flock I went after it and struck it and rescued the sheep from his mouth the Bible says that David said when it turned on him he seized it by his hair and killed it and that the uncircumcised Philistine will be like the lion and the bear long story short David knew that he had that he had the hand of the Lord upon him and that he would slay the giant the Bible says that they ran toward each other and as they ran Man, David had a stone and he put it in his sling and struck Goliath, took his sword and cut his head off. The giant you are facing is easy to kill. Can I prophesy and can I minister this for a moment? The giants that you are facing are no match for you. They're easy to kill. Giant, I need you to understand that even back in this day, although this disease was not diagnosed, I want to bring it into 2022. And I want to say that this disease that, 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 that Goliath Goliath had it was called giant uh, giantism. It is a hormone disorder that develops when your pituitary gland produces too much growth hormones. This is a serious a serious condition that is caused by an aden um, adenoma tumor of the pituitary gland. Uh, Goliath was dying. Can we can we just make that paint that picture that Goliath was dying because of this tumor? A few symptoms are uh, limited mobility. David couldn't reach. He couldn't. I mean, the Goliath couldn't reach and he couldn't run as fast. Another another uh, symptom was deafness because of the pressure of this tumor. It also called double vision because of the pressure. You have to understand that your giant does not stand a chance. Yes, it may sound 
loud. Yes, it may look big, but it does not have the weapons or the function to destroy you. You have to understand that yes, the giant in the situation that you are facing right now, it does not look like you can defeat it, but God has given you power and authority to defeat it. Chapter 18, Saul keeps David close. He keeps him close. When, he's, when he would send David on assignment, David was sure to complete them. Around this time, the popularity of David began to grow in the city, even to the point that when the men were returning home after David had killed the giant, the women came out in the streets to meet King Saul with singing and dancing. As they danced, they sang, Saul has slain his thousand, David his ten thousand. The Bible says that Saul became very angry and Saul kept a close eye on him. You have to be very careful of the conversations that you keep with people. There are people that will push you into destiny. They will push threats upon you. They will say that you're called to do it and it might be true, but not at that time, it is not your season. Hallelujah. It's not your season. The Bible says that Saul was very angry. He became very angry. And that the next day as the evil spirit came upon Saul and while David was playing, Saul took his spear in his hand and threw it at David trying to kill him twice. The Bible says that Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with David but had departed from Saul. There are people who are afraid of you. There are people who are threatened by you. Not just necessarily because of what you have to offer but because what they were doing you're going to do even greater I want to even pull to you pull to you the book of Nehemiah the book of Nehemiah when Nehemiah was building the wall and if I could fast forward through that text when Nehemiah was building the wall he laid the foundation he laid the bricks he was very grieved by the destruction of the wall but the Bible says that many people were threatened by him not just because of the wall but because of the quickness God is getting ready to thrust you people are threatened by you not because of what you are producing but because of how fast it's coming to pass yes they said Mount Moriah wasn't going to be anything but what have we done over the last 10 years can we just talk about the last year how God has prospered us how God has kept us because we kept our hand to the work yes we were willing to work yes we were willing to fight but God says as long as we stay postured he is going to prosper us so people become threatened by you not because of what you're producing but by uh, but because of how fast it's being done there are individuals who will try to kill you because of your purpose there are individuals that will try to assassinate your assignment but you have to let people know that you have permission to be where you are chapter 19 and the bible says that Saul told his son and all of the attendants to kill David but Jonathan Saul's son had taken a great liking to David and warned him my father Saul is looking for a chance to kill you be on your guard tomorrow morning go into hiding and stay there some of us we have to get some Jonathans in our lives those who are anointed to tell it those who are don't who don't mind bringing the information back not entertaining the information but I'm not going to let you talk about my church I'm not going to sit here and entertain it I'm not going to let you talk about my leaders I'm going to tell it all why because my leaders need to be aware of what you are doing and it just goes out side of the church I, I'm not going to let anybody talk about my wife I'm not going to let anybody talk about my mother I'm going to take the information back I'm going to say you said it because people will bring you information and say what well, such and such said and won't give you a name but in this next season you ought to tell yourself that I'm anointed to tell I'm anointed to tell get you some Jonathan's even after Saul promises his son that he would not kill David he tries numerous of times to kill David he again tried to kill David with his spear by sending attendants to his house to kill him with the attendants when the attendants arrived to David's house they found that David is not there one thing that I want to bring to light is that Saul's jealousy started as a personal matter but it then became a public problem it became a public issue. This was something that Saul dealt with internally. This was something that Saul didn't speak to anybody about. This is something that he tried to do. But the Bible says that he even began to send his men to go and kill David. 
In chapter 20, we gather the strength, uh, we gather the strength and the bond of David and Jonathan. You find out how faithful Jonathan is to his friend David and how much he loves him. In chapter 21 through 23, you find that David finds no rest. Saul is trying to kill him. David goes from the city, goes from city to city, fighting and winning battles. He hides in fields, and right before Saul gets there, David barely escapes. People and their families are put to death because they helped David. Families and cities are destroyed because David took refuge there. But in chapter 24, what David's heart is truly, David's heart is truly exposed. The Bible says that after Saul returned from pursuing the Philistines, he was told that David was in the desert of En Gedi. So Saul took 3,000 able young men from the from all of Israel and set out to look for David and his men. The Bible says that he came to the sheep pens along the way. A cave was there and Saul went in to relieve himself. David and his men were far back in the cave. This is when David crept up unnoticed and cut off the corner of Saul's robe. Afterward, David um, was, uh, he felt guilty for having cut off the corner of his robe. The Bible says, he said to his men, the Bible says he said to his men that the Lord forbid that he should do such a thing to his master. For Saul was anointed and God's spirit did not dwell with Saul. But Saul was still anointed for the assignment. Although the anoint, although the presence of the the Lord was not was, was not with Saul. He was still appointed for the time. So the Bible says that David rebuked his men and did not allow them attack. D he did not allow them to attack. The Bible says that when Saul left the cave, David finally comes out of the cave. David finally comes out of hiding and he calls out to Saul. And Saul looks back and he sees David. David said to Saul, why do you listen when they say that I'm trying to bring harm to you? I'm going to prophesy to about 10 individuals in this place tonight that you are coming out of your hiding season that you have been in the cave long enough it wasn't until this very moment that Saul sees David's heart he sees that he was in the very place that he was and he spared his life and uh, and this has been a long journey of running for David. This has been a long journey of hiding for David. And I want to prophesy and I want to declare to each and every individual that is in this place tonight that God is bringing you out of your hiding place. That God is bringing you into a place of stability. And upon research, the Bible talks about how David ran for 13 long years. Imagine how much time, how much time he wasted just running and hiding. How much he could have had gotten done because he uh, didn't stay where he was. The Bible says that the, the king was angry with him and that because his anointing was not with David. So the Bible says that David came out of his experience and although that David had the opportunity to kill Saul, he didn't because of God's anointing on him. But I can surmise to some of you that there are some things in our lives that we need to kill. Yes, we've been fighting with some things long enough. Yes, we might not have been able to kill the thing that we wanted to, but I want to prophesy to you that tonight is the last night that you are going to go through those problems. Tonight is the last night that you are going to deal with those issues and I want to encourage you tonight that as you are coming out what the cave represents the cave represents a safe place the cave represents a state a place of stagnation but I prophesy to each and every individual in this place tonight that God is bringing you from this safe place God is bringing you from this place of stagnation because God wants to see you prosper and some of us we have been fighting with the same spirits and the same devils long enough but I declare and decree in this place tonight that you are coming out of hiding that you are coming out of this place that you have been hiding for years I want to surmise to you that God is going to make sure that you are prospered in this next season God is not going to embarrass you but he's going to prosper you I dare you to be the prophet on your road tonight 
tonight and say, neighbor, God is going to prosper you. You ought to get in your mind tonight. You ought to make up in your spirit that you are coming out, that you are coming out of this hiding place. Some of us, we have been tormented with spirits long enough. We have been tormented with the labels that people have put on us. But tonight, you are set free. I declare and decree unto you that you are coming into a place of stability. Some of us, we have lost our minds because we have been giving people a piece of our mind. But I declare and decree unto you that when you come out of this place tonight, your mind shall be made whole. When you come out of this place tonight, God is going to prosper you. You've been worried about the wrong things long enough. But God says in this next season, he's going to have his hand of approval on you. You ought to declare and decree over your life that God is going to do the impossible. You ought to declare and decree over your life your life that God is going to do what man said could not be done God is going to do what the doctor said could not be done I've been hiding in this place of fear long enough but I want to tell you tonight is the last night that you have to cry over that same thing I prophesy to you in this place that God is going to do a new thing in your life but I know need you to make up in your mind that God is going to prosper me. God hand of approval is on my life and because I'm coming out of hiding, my children is going to be blessed. Because I'm coming out of hiding, everything connected me is going to be blessed. Because I'm coming out of hiding, I'm not going to be bullied by the enemy anymore, but I'm going to stand up with boldness and fight against the wiles of the enemy. I'm going to stand up with boldness and fight this thing called fear. I'm going to stand up with boldness and take back everything that the devil has stole from me. I've worked too hard for it. I've labored too long for it. And I can't let my enemy have what belongs to me. But tonight, I'm going after everything that God says belongs to me I'm going after everything that God says has my name on it I've been in a place of defeat long enough but God is bringing me to a place of victory God is changing my identity because I decided to take this leap of faith because I decided that I'm not going to stay where I was but I'm going to fight against the enemy because I need my children to prosper. I need my mother to prosper. I need my father to prosper. I need my church to prosper. So I'm going to do my part. I'm going to come out of hiding and I'm going to fight this thing. I could have killed you. I could have taken you out. But because God has given me patience to endure, I'm going to let you live this time. But I want to let you know tonight that there are some things in your life that you need to cut off. There are some things in your life that you need to kill. There are some things in your life that you need to let go of. And I prophesy in this place to each and every individual in this place that God is thrusting you, that God is pushing you until your next season. God is pushing you and God is thrusting you until the next dimension. David said in Psalms 51 and 10, create in me a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me. David made up in his mind that although I may be disobedient, God, I still need your presence. The difference between David and Saul is that David had a heart after God and David went after God with everything that he had. David had a repentant heart. I need each and every one of you that's in this place tonight to get in your mind tonight that when I come to this altar that when I grab this mic I need to have a heart of purity I need to have a heart of repentance
repentance because the people that are walking through these doors is not about me but it's about the souls that God is going to touch you ought to touch your neighbor tonight and say neighbor God is posturing you and God is positioning you because there is a work that must be done there is a work and a weight that must be carried you ought to make up in your mind tonight that I'm going to be the one to make sure that the vision prosper you ought to make up in your mind tonight that I am the one that's going to make sure that the church is taken care of I'm not looking for a thank you and I'm not looking to give you an award you're welcome but I'm looking to posture myself because my reward comes from the Lord and when I serve in the house of God it's not about my thank you it's not about the pat on the back but it's about the posture of my heart God is getting ready to bless the posture I dare you to make up in your mind tonight that you are going to leave this place ready to posture yourself ready to serve in the house of God ready to serve in the community we have been on this consecration for these last few days not just for the discipline but God wants to release some things and we have to be postured and ready I hate to burst some of your bubbles because of your posture you won't receive because of your posture and your ill will you can't receive what God is going to do you ought to make up in your mind that God is going to bless the posture I fasted long enough I prayed for this thing I shall see the manifestation of every promise you ought to tell God thank you because tonight he's releasing every promise to you tonight he's releasing because you decided to come out of your cave experience God is releasing supernatural power and supernatural healing because you made up in your mind that you're not going to stay where you were God is releasing. You ought to lift up your voice and lift up your hands tonight and tell God thank you. Come on, tell him thank you for the release. Tell him thank you for the release. He's releasing it tonight. Supernatural healing shall be a portion because you've been postured. God's releasing it tonight. So I want to declare to every intercessor, get back in your place. Get back on the wall and do what you are called to do. See what you're supposed to see. I want to declare to each and every adjutant and each and every armor bearer, it's more than just a bag. It's more than just the kids. But I need you to see like never before to the praise team of this house. It's more than just a mic, but every Sunday is an emergency. We need you to be postured. We've been getting by long enough, but God needs us to posture because God is getting ready to release power and authority over his children. I prophesy that God is releasing every promise that you have been praying for. Open up your mouth and bless him. He's doing it for you. He's releasing it tonight. He's releasing it tonight to each and every person that is connected to this house. Just because you're connected and you decided to posture yourself under this leadership, you shall receive more. I prophesy over Mount Moriah Community Church Raleigh that the more is here and the more is coming and that God is that God is taking us higher God is shifting us in the region God is giving us territory you ought to declare it over your life that God is giving me the impossible because I decided tonight I'm coming out 
I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I want the world to know. I got to let it show that God is exposing me to the righteous. That God is bringing exposure to my household. That God is bringing exposure because I've been postured. We've seen people prosper long enough. But this next season, I prophesy, is for the posture. You shall see it. You shall hold it. You shall say it. You shall declare it. And it shall come to pass. And it shall come to pass. And it shall come to pass. Launch your business. Go back to school. Restart if you have to. Because the beauty of restarting is that you decided not to stay in the place that you are in. God is honoring you for pushing the restart button. Yes, you ran long enough, but God is giving you the ability to trample over serpents. I dare you to walk around in this room and put everything that has been trying to plague you under your feet. You have power and authority. God has given it to you. Stop on the snake's head. Step on the scorpion. Cancer can't take you out. Sickness can't take you out. But I declare that healing is coming to this house. I declare and decree over your life that the enemy will not take you out. But you're going to win and you're going to prosper. You ought to be the prophet on your row and say, neighbor, you're going to win. Say, neighbor, you're going to prosper. Neighbor, you're going to live to see it happen. You're going to live to enjoy it. You're going to live to see your children happen. I prophesy an inheritance shall be your portion because you didn't decide to stay where you were but you decided that I'm going to face my giant and I'm going with the Lord on my side I'm going in the name of the Lord and he's going with me and because God is with me you will win because God is with you you shall win there are some battles that you don't even have to fight but when you walk into it, victory. When you walk into it, you ought to declare that because the Lord is with me, he will fight for me. Because the Lord is with me, he will, he will, he will fight this battle. He will fight this war. And all you have to do and lift up your hands and receive victory. Receive victory. Receive victory. Receive victory. You're poured out. You've been faithful. You've been pure. You've been steadfast. This is your time. And I prophesy that at the end of this consecration, your life will never be the same. Not because you turn your plate over, but because of your obedience. God is blessing obedience in this season. He's blessing your obedience. Thank you for doing it. But were you obedient? Thank you for turning your plate over. But were you praying? God is blessing you in this next season for your obedience. Somebody ought to say yes. He's doing it for me. Every promise. Every promise. Every business. Every idea. It's going to come to pass. They said you couldn't do it. But I dare you to come out of the cave of comparison. Come out of your cave of rejection and do it.
because you're safe. I dare some people tonight to make up in your mind that God is going to do it for me. Even if you have to run to this altar and stand in the gap for somebody else, I want you to make your way to this altar tonight. Every creative, every ministry worker, every adjutant, every intercessor. If you're on the choir, there is more that's required of you. Get to this altar tonight and tell God, I'm coming out of this cave experience. Tell God that I'm coming out of where I am. I'm coming out of this hiding place and he's gonna do it.